Hey folks, Joseph Isabora here. It's been a while since I've done my last movie review, but I'm doing one this week. And I finally saw a very wonderful film that just came out on March 18 of this year called Midnight Special. A story about a father who's about to protect his son who turns out to have supernatural powers. Stars Michael Shannon, who was in the film Take Shelter and several others. Joel Egerton, who was in Black Mask and other movies. Kirsten Dunst, great actress and best known for her films like Jumanji, Small Soldiers, Bring It On, and several others. Adam Driver, who's just recently been in, in the film Star Wars The Force Awakens. Jaden Liberher. Sam Shepard. Paul Sparks. Nathan Bremer. Scott Hayes. James Dumont. Sean Bridgers. And Billy Slaughter. And it's written and directed by Jeff Nichols, who gave us films like Take Shelter and Mud. The movie begins where we meet Roy Meyer, who's played by Michael Shannon, who happens to be the father of his eight-year-old son, Alton, who's played by Jaden Liberhood. It turns out that he has supernatural powers. And they're about to escape with his long-lost childhood friend, who's a state trooper named Lucas, who's played by Joe Egerton, from a religious cult that's won by Calvin Meyer, who's played by Sam Shepard. They help to bring the boy to a different location on a specific date in which celestials and world changing events may occur at this point. So they had to drive backcountry late at night, which all of a sudden they get involved in a car accident, which was a female driver, and then a state trooper arrived on the scene just when they're about to be at gunpoint. Lucas shot the state trooper and it's about to call out uh, for the ambulance for both of them. So they all escaped and winds up uh, seeking shelter with their former member of the religious called Elton, who's played by David Jensen. But meanwhile, the FBI are investigating the cult in search for Elton, and that's where we meet a specialist, Paul Surveyor, who's played by Adam Driver. By interviewing the members who proclaims um, Alton's uh, abilities to where he actually uses all the powers that he had to live on an ultra sleeping schedules because he can't be able to face daylight because that would definitely affect him which it happened to uh, to Elton when when during sunlight that's where his eyes, um, eye vision, was starting to uh, create that power that's going straight to Elton's eyes. Yeah, that's another reason why he wears those blue goggles, you know, just to cover you know, his vision. So he's basically like Cyclops in that sort of way. Not to mention the church sermons uh, with their dates had made prophecies by Elton by using the secret government information that's communicated by the satellite. So then, Roy and Lucas decide to leave um, Elton's by taking their van with Alton and stop at a gas station just so they can make a run for it. But then Alton had escaped from the van and started using his powers to pull a satellite from space, which creates a meteor shower that's hitting the gas station, including the food marts and the casino. So they all escaped again and and decided to meet Sarah, which happens to be Alton's mother, who's played by Kirsten Dunst. Now, also from the cult, she has not seen her son in two years, so hoping that he'll be okay. But while they were on the road, Alton had had sent some air patrols that searching for him until they made a stop um, driving on Sarah's uh, Suzuki. So then Roy and Alton decided to go all the way into the woods 
so that way he'd be able to face his fears by by using his powers uh, to create the dome of light as the earth begins to shake so he'll be able to see again you know, during the daylight while Lucas and Sarah decided to stay at night at a hotel just for protection so then Roy and Alton had went back to the hotel to see if everything's okay that is until two henchmen from the cult who are both played by Bill Camp and Scott Hayes had shot Roy and Lucas about to tie um, Roy, Lucas, and Sarah in the hotel and and kidnap Alton just when they're about to be stopped by a military roadblock by checking all vehicles and cars by searching the boy and Alton wants up in a FBI facility which he's beginning to talk to Severe by using his supernatural powers to him by telling him that he is from another world and he wants to escape but he wants to go back to, with Roy, Lucas and Sarah which that's where it, it leads to um, what's going to happen next once uh, Alton wants to finding his home great film very well made um, had a, lots of great visual effects that they use uh, mostly from the powers of that the boy has, Alton, and great performances by Michael Shannon, Joe Egerton, and Kirsten Dunst, as well as uh, actor Jaden Ben Lieberher, who plays Alton. Yeah. Great cast. Adam yeah. Driver, um, he just doesn't do it for me, just like how he did in in Star Wars The Force Awakens. He's just plain an instant bore. Sorry to say this, but it's true. <laughs> He's not much of a good actor anyway. In my opinion. Um, Sam Shepard, um, he did okay in the film. It was only a small role for him where he just plays the uh, the pastor, uh, Calvin uh, Meyer, and runs the, the religious cult. I, I just love the effects that they use in the movie, you know, where they show the meteor showers that's just hitting the gas station everywhere, and then later we get to see uh, Alton using his powers, you know, facing daylight, and he creates a dome where he's now going to be creating um, something that's going to happen next, so he'll be able to uh, find his way. Because he actually belongs to uh, another planet. I love the moments was when he was wearing uh, his blue goggles and he takes a flashlight. He was just reading a comic book, which is Superman. It almost seems like a connection to where Michael Shannon played uh, General Zod, the bad guy in Men of Steel. And <laughs> so there's a connection right there. <laughs> But of course, Lucas had gave him the comic book so he'd be able to read uh, while they're on the road, being chased by the religious cults, as well as the FBI, CIA, the whole government was going after him. Also, a wonderful score by David Ringo. It definitely has that uh, synthesizer beat to it. It definitely has a feel for sci-fi films like this. Almost has that 80s vibe to it with the mix of 90s in, in that sort of way I mean it also felt like it was shot in the 90s too because they were still using the regular technology you know like they still had uh, old TVs uh, from the 90s and as well as all the other uh, VCRs uh, they even have a DVD player too and all that in the mix so, <laughs> I mean, in, in that nostalgia way, but even though this was shot in pretty much set in this uh, modern day, so uh, it's definitely like um, 
in the tradition of Close Encounters of the Third Kind and E.T. in the mix. But it's not a ripoff, so that's a good thing. But definitely was uh, an interesting movie to see. And Jake Nichols definitely did a great job um, doing this, writing and directing this movie. This was definitely, um, definitely worth watching. And it's also the best film of the year. Unfortunately, it wasn't a big hit. It only made six point two million dollars out of its eighteen million out of its eighteen million dollar budget that this film has. It's a rather small budget, and I really enjoyed it. So check out Midnight Special. I give that film five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.